Good morning. You're listening to Lyon County News Extra, the radio edition from the headquarters of Lyon County News in the Lyon County News studios, Lyon County's local news. Craig Johnson here alongside Cheryl Corselman and Millie Krull. Good morning, ladies. Good Good morning, morning, Craig. We have got a great show on tap for you this morning. So much to cover. And uh, I think think we should start with what happened the most recent. If you you were in town on, was it Tuesday afternoon? Yes. Yes. If you were in town on Tuesday afternoon, you may have... uh, you may have heard sounds like this. You may not have heard this part, but this you might have heard a couple times, and that a little bit, maybe some sirens, and ultimately it ended with this. <laughs> High-speed chase came through the streets of George, and we've got a uh, kind of a comprehensive article of all the details we could muster from uh, scouring the interwebs to bring you the details. I believe the, the uh, young man involved in the, uh, or the causer of the commotion is, uh, is in the clink right now. So right. they got a hold of him, tackled him. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. So uh, that, that's kind of the most recent thing. Um, and let's do, let's do our... Let's do our weather bet because we've got a special announcement for the weather. Still got it. That's a nice job on the soprano <laughs> part there. Dave Thank from, you. <laughs> from the Clarence Stubbe Weather Bureau, our April 3rd high was 33 degrees. That's not enough, is it? No. No. And our we low need to get rid of this stuff and get some spring. <laughs> seven, seven degrees. April 4 was 32 and a low of zero. It's not enough again. Uh, we had precip on the 3rd. What was that? Almost a half an inch? What does this mean? 5.5 inches of snow? Yes. Oh, don't tell me we had snow again. Oh, yeah, that was in the paper last week, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, he's got all of the all of the highs and lows there for the for the week. We had uh, nine and a half inches of snow officially in Clarence Stubbe's weather bureau. We want to wish Clarence a very happy birthday next Monday. Can you believe he's going to be past 80 years old? <laughs> Yeah, happy birthday, Clarence. Happy birthday, Clarence. <laughs> I think it's more than 80, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> is it 94? Is that the number? I think that's right. Well, as we say in basketball, that's unofficial statistics, but we think it's 94. <laughs> happy birthday, Clarence. Thank you for your weather bureau each and every week here on the uh, Lyon County News on the front page and now on Lyon County News uh, Radio Edition. Now you'll be warm and dry, things won't fall. Cause you got your weather from the radio. I can't believe it, Millie, but you still you still got it. <laughs> nice job on the high notes. Well hey, uh we've got a whole lot to get through today. What do you have in the box there? What's in front of you in the on the table? We're having coffee here during the program. We have some delicious raspberry flips from our friends at Casey's. Oh, those are delicious. And a hard habit to break, aren't they? They're, yes, they yes. are. Very hard. <laughs> I want to thank our friends at Casey's. Check them out for all kinds of, uh, of convenience store items, good food, and uh, stop yeah. in for a... Subway, Subway sandwiches, yep. and yeah, pizza. pizza. Famous for pizza. I had a piece of breakfast pizza this morning. I took care of my breakfast needs, and <laughs> and uh, I'll be joy- in joining you to enjoy one of those raspberry flips in a little bit here. Um, 
So thank you, Casey's, for that. And uh, I think what we'll do now, let us let us jump over to. Um, we we had a neat article about the uh, STEM club at school. They took a trip to Houston to NASA to design an an inhabitable. Is that right? Or habitable? Which would it be? Not an uninhabitable, but one, a place you could live in, in space, a habitable space station. And we were able to catch up with Lisa Harms, who was the chaperone. We'll hear from her, and then when we get back, we'll have some updates from Millie and Cheryl and some other things. So stay tuned here. Here is Lisa Harms on the recent STEM Club trip to Houston. All right, we're talking to Lisa Harms, the GLR science teacher. Lisa had the recent occasion and opportunity to chaperone the STEM club students on a trip to Houston. Welcome, Lisa, to the broadcast. Hi. Hey, <laughs> great to talk to you this morning. I uh, want to talk to you a little bit about the STEM club trip and uh, hit the highlights for the listening audience here. Some of them may have, have gotten wind of what happened a little bit through the the different stories that were that have been published. This is kind of a recap. Now, a couple weeks after the after the fact, I suppose it's even more than a couple weeks now, isn't it? Yeah, it was um, March twenty second through March twenty seventh. So, uh, or twenty sixth, excuse me. So it's been a few a couple weeks. <laughs> it has, and in between there, we've had a couple of snowstorms and a swing show and a whole bunch of other stuff at school. So, <laughs> so um, uh, well. Tell us a little bit about the um, the uh, STEM club and how you got in in uh, involved in this particular trip. All right. Um, well, the there's STEM club students who are interested in um, applying to go on a trip to NASA. Uh, they there's students from George Little Rock and several schools around the area. Um, have a similar application process where they will select students from their high schools to attend. And we had five students able to attend this year. Um, And when they filled out their application, they had to give good reasons why they wanted to be able to be a part of the Space Settlement Design Competition. Wow, Space Settlement Design at NASA. That's kind of a that's kind of a big, it's a big deal. There. Yeah. <laughs> and it's who knows when we may need to be exploring that in, in uh, much more real terms than, than uh, just in theoretical design terms. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So, so the five students and you, you left on a Thursday morning and then uh, tell us just a little bit about how the trip went and how you got to Houston and, and how those first, the first, uh, day or so went all right um well thursday morning we left the george high school parking lot and in a in a van and got to sioux city um where we had our first little um, briefing session at a community college there with um, several other northwest iowa schools and then after the briefing session we got on three um big buses and and traveled the rest of the way all the way down to um, down to Houston. Um, along the way, there was one other stop in Iowa to pick up some more Iowa kids, and then um, there were some other stops along the way so the, the kids could get refreshments and and everything. But the, we were, we traveled straight through all the way to Houston. Got there by Friday morning, and Friday morning um, we all got to go to um, like the NASA Recreation Center called the Gilruth Center to refresh, take showers, and get ready for the rest of the day on Friday. So that's how the first day went. (laughs) Uh, Now, Friday, you you had kind of a, during the day, you had kind of a day to see some of the sites and get out to the beach and get out to, was it Galveston? Yes, yep. (laughs) <laughs> and they enjoyed a, a ferry ride that was kind of a treat. We um, rode a ferry that brings several vehicles from the 
Galveston Peninsula to an island, and the kids thought that was pretty cool. It was a beautiful day. And then when we got back to Galveston, we got to spend the day um, enjoying the boardwalk and, and the beach um, before the real fun began that evening where we went back to um, Houston to, and then the kids had uh, their real briefing session and learned all about what they were in store for for the next couple of days. <laughs> that is awesome. So then, uh, and that was Friday night, you had opening exercises and briefings and all of, all kind of stuff like that. You had a couple of special speakers, I understand. Yes. Yep. Um, the most special speaker we had was Norman Chaffee. He is a retired um, NASA engineer and was a big part of the NASA program for many, many years. Um, and he just, the history he has seen um, was just wonderful. And then we had another speaker, uh, Jordan Menning. He is our very own Northwest Iowa science consultant um, from the AEA. And he got to speak to the kids as well. And um, it was just a great experience. And then after they listened to them speak, they were um, divided into their working groups. There were four different, uh, um, they called them companies, that had to come up with the, their space settlements to be able to present at the competition, um, present for the competition on Sunday. So that all got underway Friday night. Saturday was kind of a work day then, working on the projects? Yes, yep. Uh, they got to actually work in what's called Building Number 9. And, and Building Number 9 is full of um, the robots and the NASA equipment, all the international space, um, the actual international space settlement that is um, orbiting Earth right now, those mock-up pieces are in this building and the kids got to work amongst those that all that stuff they didn't get to climb around and go on anything but because that would you know but they got to work in that building which made them feel really kind of like you know important and and they got to work in their in their groups and come up with a their own space settlement design for a community that would be in what's called the l4 um, libration that's between the earth and, and moon. Um, so that is, that's a pretty special deal to work right in the same environment as all of those, uh, prototypes and, yes, and uh, yeah. all of that equipment that yeah. has gone to make manifest a lot of existing, uh, settlements out in space. That's very, very cool. It was very cool. So that, that, uh, Workday kind of went all day Saturday, if I understand right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then you had presentations from the groups on Sunday. Yep. And so um, they worked all day Saturday. And then around 11 o'clock, they had to head back to the Space Center um, the where there's a, a big museum. And, and that's where the kids all slept. But a lot of the kids decided to keep working all night long to make sure their presentations for Sunday morning were um, really good. So they, so all actually all day Saturday and Saturday night and into the we order we we morning hours they worked on their their design their design and perfecting their presentation for the judges. What an experience! And then uh, the presentations went went off without a hitch all uh, Sunday morning and in, was it into the afternoon? Um, no, it just pretty much was Sunday morning, and then they um, got to eat lunch. And then while the judges deliberated, the students got to do a lot of um, sightseeing right at NASA. They got to actually go to um, Rocket Park. And then, again, at Rocket Park, um, Norman Chaffee got to talk about um, the huge rocket that was housed inside of one of the buildings. Um and they got to learn firsthand from him what it was like for um, the, you know, the rockets to take off. And, and he could explain everything in real great detail. And the kids loved listening to that. And then they also got to visit 
um, some other places, the, the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, which is the largest pool in the world. And in that pool um, is, again, the whole international space, um, the ISS is in that pool. And so astronauts can practice working on the outside of that space, that space settlement. So it's kind of neat. They got to see all of that on Sunday. What an experience. And then, uh, then at some point on Sunday, you boarded the buses and headed back north, huh? Yep. They, um, well, after they did the touring and the judges um, came to their decision on the winner, they, they, yep, then they headed back north, and we traveled all night all the way through to Monday again. <laughs> oh, what an experience. Well, we've got a uh, we've got a picture showcase. Lisa took a lot of pictures along the way, and we've got a, that picture showcase on our uh, website, so you can go and look for the STEM Club trip on on the uh, LionCountyNews dot com and see a big uh, photo gallery of those pictures. And uh, Lisa and I are working to put some captions to some of the pictures that are. Uh, not captioned yet, but a lot of them have an idea right below the picture. And some of it you can see just from looking at the picture kind of what it is. It's very neat. And I want to thank you for taking all those great pictures all along the trip and keeping us informed back here at home. Well, thanks, Craig. And I want to thank everybody um, who made this trip trip possible for the kids. They did a few fundraising things and, um, the kids didn't have to pay for anything except for their own souvenirs and, and other stuff. So a big thank you to everybody who helped out. Um, it was really, really important for these kids to experience this. What a great experience indeed. And, and yes, thanks to the community for their show of support at different fundraising events and so forth. And what a great, great opportunity. It well, was. thank you too. Also was. Lisa for chaperoning the kids, keeping them out of, out of too much trouble and uh, <laughs> it was, getting them it was down so there fun. and back safely. <laughs> so, it was fun. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your time here this morning. We're glad that you were able to give us give us an update, and uh, we'll uh, we'll continue to update that web page with those pictures and things like that. Thanks again, Lisa, for your time this morning. All right, thank you. Bye. That was Lisa Harm. She had the. Uh, occasion and opportunity to chaperone the students all the way down to Houston to NASA. Isn't that something? Oh, I think we had, uh, let me make sure your mics are on, ladies. I think we had five students out of our student body, and there's a nice article right on the homepage of, of LionCountyNews.com. You can see a lot of pictures that uh, Lisa took on the trip. and uh, That's a great opportunity for those kids. It is, and they get to work right in the same lab where they've got all the space station stuff that pool the largest pool in the world they've got a space station in the pool wow. she was talking about that that's where the astronauts practice being in outer space they go underwater that's the closest thing we can do on land here i guess <laughs> but they practice by going underwater to figure out how to fix the outside of the space station pretty important stuff so well, that's a great uh, – thank you, Lisa, for your time on that and giving us the update and the, the recap on that. I know that was a big opportunity for those those uh, five students. Man, I'm just looking at a great newspaper here this week, ladies. Front page with the spring swing, the, the swing choir and the jazz band. We talked about what a great job they did. And uh, wanted to talk just for a minute. I had the opportunity to go uh, trail around with the congressman – from District 4, Congressman Steve King came out to Duralift last Friday, and uh, the Duralift folks got to show him around and, and talk about their process and what they do in their factory. And uh, we've got a great article about that on the, uh, on the website as well as on the front page. So come and check that out. I know that uh, uh, Congressman King spoke a little bit about some of the tariffs that are are uh, being batted back and forth between the U.S. and China. And I noticed that, uh, Cheryl, you've got a great article in there about some other tariffs that are impacting farmers in the region as well. So that's all in the newspaper this week. Um, 
I'm going to go to Millie. What do you have um, in the way of important announcements or anything like that? Well, uh, Osceola Hospital and Clinic are uh, doing a meet and greet on um, Thursday, April 19th. And uh, they have two new doctors that are working in the clinic. And that's a Dr. Mosier and a Dr. Van Gorp. So if anybody would like to go over and greet them, they can do so on Thursday, April 19th. All right, that's April 19th. We're going to go now to uh, Rob Van Egdem from Heartland Hardware. He's going to tell us about some of their new uh, furniture options there at the hardware store. We'll be back right after this. When we come back, we'll have some more announcements and updates. And we're talking to Rob Van Egdom from the Heartland Hardware Store here on Main Street in George, Iowa. Welcome aboard, Rob. Hey, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. It was an interesting uh, visit I made recently to your huge new furniture showroom. I didn't know you had that much room in the hardware store. Yeah, it's amazing what you can squeak into uh, 4,000 square feet. It's, it's a tremendous addition for the community. What a selection. If you go to Heartland Hardware, you can go and browse from a gigantic selection of great new furniture. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, uh, at our last hardware buying show that we had in Minneapolis, I was looking for new ideas and, and ways to bring new people into the store. Stopped at a booth that was uh, full of Ashley furniture, and they proposed an idea or showed me an idea of allowing the customers, new and existing customers we have at the store, to be able to shop from thousands and thousands of Ashley furniture products online on a 46-inch kiosk. Um, so right now we have access to thousands of items with a little click of the finger. We could show you sofas, love seats, end tables, kitchen tables, chairs. We have access to unlimited amounts of furniture right now at the store. It's really great. I know that you can't get that back door closed on the back of the store for all the sofas hanging off of the back <laughs> deck there, but the kiosk, it's a center within the store where you can just go up to a screen and make your selections, and the screen responds and presents you with all kinds of options. It's a very neat experience and uh, one that everybody within the sound of, of my voice should go and experience for themselves. It's very neat, very cool, and uh, if you're looking for any furniture of any kind, you can find it there and order it directly in to George, Iowa. The, the same selection as if you went to a huge furniture store somewhere else, but this way we're able to shop local and, and keep our business on Main Street. The other great thing is, is that just like our appliances, we're going to show you what Sioux Falls is charging, and we're going to base our prices off their prices. So a lot of times when we show somebody that we're the same price of Sioux Falls, it's kind of in their eyes a no-brainer, like you said, to shop locally and, and at the same time getting a price that you would if you had to drive all the way to Sioux Falls. Uh, that's a terrific, terrific addition to the store and uh, very easy to use, very fun to browse through the, the selection. So if you've got any uh, needs in the furniture realm, or if you just want to come and check it out, swing by swing by Heartland Hardware and check out the uh, huge new furniture showroom, 4,000 square feet right here in George, Iowa. Yeah, just make sure go in the near future we're going to you know, probably get an addition to our website so th that we can click on items that we can get there. Um, and at the same time, we'll send out reminders on our Facebook of the new opportunity that we have to uh, offer the citizens and the surrounding citizens of uh, George um, Furniture Products. And one other thing is, is they, they ship it direct to us, so um, it's coming to George and no one's having to travel anywhere. Oh, that's a great, great thing. So you can get it right here locally, have it shipped here locally, and then uh, save the hassle of having to go to the big city to go get it. So what a great opportunity. Thanks a lot for sharing that, Rob. All right. Hey, thanks for having me on today. You bet. That's uh, Rob Van Egdom from Heartland Hardware right here in George, Iowa. A huge 4,000 square foot <laughs> furniture showroom right inside the hardware store. <laughs> really, it's a remarkable thing for a small town to have that opportunity. So I want to thank Rob for sharing that. I've got a couple things, um, ladies. We've got, uh, oh man, this 
We just ate a delicious raspberry flip, but this this ad is making me hungry. <laughs> Last Call Saloon. This Saturday night, that's April 14th, this Saturday night from 6 to 10, prime rib, baked potato or cheesy potatoes, salad, and a dinner roll. Sounds great. Oh, 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 oh. doesn't that sound good? It does. Last Call Saloon. And then they've got the Hoa Mexican food coming up on April 28, May 12, and May 26. They just had that last weekend, and I heard it was, was quite the success as well. So, And they also have it, uh, their daily menus on the TV guide. Right. So if you need some place at noon to get a quick bite to eat, check it out and see if it sounds good. It all sounds good to me. I tell yeah. you that. <laughs> So let's see. Today is uh, what day is it today? Today April is 12th. Thursday. Thursday, April twelfth. Thank you. Their special today is hot beef and mashed potatoes. What are you guys doing after the radio show? <laughs> <laughs> we should run up and get a get a bite of lunch. So last call saloon there, and then uh, I've got one other thing. I've got a a bit of a an audio promo, and then I'll tell you what it's all about. See what you think of this. Just as blue as I could be Every day was a cloudy day for me Then God's love came a-knocking at my door Skies were gray, but they're not gray anymore No, 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 not gray anymore Blue skies smiling at me Smiling at me Nothing but blue skies Blue skies do I see So that is Ernie Couch, Ernie and Jason Couch Revival. That's the name of the group. That's a Southern Gospel group. Gospel and Christian music fans need to circle the wagons on April 19th. That's this a week from today in the evening, 7 p.m. This Nashville, Tennessee duo, Ernie and Jason Couch, will be in concert here in George at Tabernacle Church at 7 o'clock in the evening. So... That's kind of what's going on with that. So I think that's a neat way to to take a song that we all know the tune of and make it exciting and and fun. So they're going to be here 7 o'clock next Thursday night. So that was the other announcement that I had. Now I'm going to go to you, Cheryl. You've got a couple things to tell our listeners. Um, we have in the, a card shower, the family of Ethel Try is requesting a card shower for her. She's going to be 90 years old on April 20. And you can check it out in the paper for the address to send Ethel a greeting on her birthday. That's great. That's great. And you have one other announcement too, I think, I right? do. The new superintendent at George Little Rock, uh, John Ierly, he's going to be hosting uh, Coffee with the Superintendent. You can talk to him, give him all your comments or whatever you want. And he's going to do that Monday, April 23rd in George at the community room from 9.30 to 11 in the morning and from 5.30 to 7 in the evening. And then he's going to be in Little Rock on Thursday, April 26th at the Town and Country Building from 9 to 10.30 in the morning and 5.30 to 7 in the evening. So come out and talk to the superintendent and tell him what you think is going on. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's opening up the door there, Superintendent Ierly. You understand. <laughs> that's, that's opening the door. <laughs> but what a great opportunity for a chance to, uh, to meet and greet and talk about the issues and, and find out first-person perspectives on, uh, on what they're thinking. Uh, before I go to you, Millie, with your uh, your closing word, I want to talk about our business and professional services directory. It's right inside the front cover each week, and it's been uh, 
it's been growing and now our now our page is full you've got we've got people now on the waiting list to get on the page uh, we've got a great great group of businesses and unique and uh, and um, interesting services available so not just not just uh, everything that's on Main Street but these are also businesses that are uh, entrepreneur people people that are taking care of a, a certain need of a certain niche um, one of them here I'm mentioning Mulder Concrete. They'll do everything from cattle yards to sidewalks <laughs> and everything in between. So they'll make concrete happen for you if it's agricultural, residential, or commercial. And that's uh, right there in the business directory. Also, Bruce's Repair in, in uh, Matlock, they will sell you a lawnmower or fix the one you've got or um, fix small engines or kind of any kind of anything that you need in that in that repair uh, world, small engine and auto repair. They've got tire sales. They, they've got a, uh, lawn mowers for sale there. It's great. And earlier we heard from Heartland Hardware. You can go check out their furniture store. But one of one of note, uh, Greg Baker is looking for uh, some help. He's expanding the business there, the building movers. Check out their ad in the business directory. And on our, our digital side, there's a little more detail on the help wanted section on the digital side. But great starting pay. I talked to him about the opportunity. Uh, if you have any, any questions, call Greg Baker. Use his cell phone number, 605-838-7105. And that's Greg Baker, Baker Building Movers. They're based out of Dune. And so if you are around this area you'd go to the dune shop in the morning you'd start your day there and you'd be home probably most of the uh almost every night you'd be home back in your own home so presuming you can drive after dark right <laughs> they've got a right. lot of work lined up and he needs some help so he's asking for some uh some inquiries on that so give him a call 605-838-7105 um we'll come back to some other help wanted opportunities that are in the paper this week but I'll go to you for your uh, for your last word here, Millie. Well, I just wanted to emphasize our short stuff, our two columns on the front page with all of our announcements, that if you have any kind of meetings or anything interesting going on, uh, to let us know here that we can include it in our short stuff. And also, I wanted to go over our hours We are here in the news office uh, Monday and Tuesdays from 8 to 5, and then on Thursday mornings, 8 to 12. Now, Cheryl and I are both, every other Wednesday are here, uh, but it's good luck on finding us in because uh, we go to Sibley to get our papers, take them to the post office, and uh, take them to our good Sam and different places. So we're mostly... In and out. So Wednesdays are kind of bad to try to get hold of us. but And we are then closed on Fridays. So that's it for me, Craig. All right. Now, it, ad, advertising-wise, you can reach us here at the local number, 475-3351. Uh, that'll most likely get you in touch with Cheryl. Uh, she's the most friendly of the three of us. <laughs> right. And then... And then <laughs> Uh, if she doesn't answer, Millie will answer. She's the second most friendly. And then uh, if you want to use our, our advertising hotline, that will follow me. I don't know how this works, ladies, but it, if I leave the building, this number still reaches me even if I'm out of the building, 712-318-2813. What you're going to love about that number is the last seven digits are the same backwards as forwards. Should be easy to remember Should be that. easy to remember, 318-2813. And that is uh, that is listed on our on our digital site at lioncountynews.com. Some great things happening on the digital side, um, and we don't always get uh, we don't always get to post everything that comes in that's interesting in the in the printed page because it comes in different times and different intervals. And so some things that are of interest we post on the digital side. Our digital edition is at lioncountynews.com which most of you that are listening to us know that because you're on that site to listen to the broadcast. But um, some great things happening there. We've got some uh, some terrific help-wanted opportunities. If you know anybody that's looking for, for
for a job or um, if you yourself are, uh, check out the back page of this week's paper. We've got some great things in there. Summer work available at Valley Machining. They've also got a, a split shift machinist opportunity there at Valley Machining in Rock Valley. Um, Lyon County Highway Department has a has a job vacancy. They're looking for some help. Also, uh, Avera Hospital in Rock Val or Rock Rapids, rather, excuse me, looking for an administrator, and then Plumbing and Heating Wholesale, uh, looking for a shipping and receiving opportunity. Definitely want to check out those those uh, options. Also, NCC has got a coordinator of library services. So if you're one of those people that has an eye for detail and knows how how books are lined up in the library. They are looking for somebody to help coordinate that at NCC. All of this information available on the Lyon County News newspaper this week, as well as our digital edition, LyonCountyNews.com. Um, I don't want to I don't want to forget something here. So let me go through my checklist. We talked about Congressman King's visit, some of the help wanted ads. We talked about the superintendent's coffee and the card shower, right? We talked about the short stuff in the newspaper, the office hours, the meet and greet for Osceola Hospital. We talked about the concert coming up next week, Thursday. It's going to be a fun one. Heartland Hardware gave their update. Am I missing anything else? We want to thank Casey's again for the delicious, nutritious, and never malicious raspberry <laughs> flips. I, think, I we've, think we've hit it all, I Craig. think so. I think we've covered most everything. So uh, it's been fun. Did you have a good time this morning, ladies? Yeah, sure I hope, did. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed listening as much as we've enjoyed putting this broadcast together. So much good stuff happening here at the Lyon County News. We just, we just wanted to yell it from the rooftops. <laughs> uh, if you have any trouble hearing the broadcast, you may want to take a lawn chair and put it out at the end of your driveway. Aim it at a 45-degree angle from the water tower <laughs> and aim it into your living room. Point your browser to Lyon County News every Thursday morning at 930 while we enjoy raspberry flips and sharing the news with you from Lyon County's local news, Lyon County's local news station.